everybody, and welcome to uh, OSU Extension Agronomic Props Team's first ever virtual corn college and soybean school. I'm Mary Griffith, an Extension Educator in Madison County, Ohio, and I'm one of the Agronomic Crops team leaders along with Amanda Doritas and Laura Lindsay, and the three of us will be mo uh, moder moderating throughout uh, the day. So thank you for joining us. All right. Well, thanks for joining uh, for the second half of our program. Uh, we're going to turn our attention uh, now to soybean. Uh, so I'm Laura Lindsay. I'm the soybean and small grain extension specialist here at Ohio State. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we have several soybean specialists, including uh, Dr. Mark Laux, who will be talking about weed management in soybean, uh, Dr. Ann Dorns, the soybean pathologist, and Dr. Kelly Tillman, who is uh, going to focus on insect management in soybean. I want to focus on uh, some soybean management, some trials we've been working on uh, the past uh, year or so here at OSU. Before I get started, I want to uh, point out my graduate student, uh, Fabiano. Uh, Fabiano started in January, uh, and he's been working on a lot of this data. And the reason I have it to present today is because he was very diligent in his data collection and analysis. So uh, when you see all of my graphs and things like that, uh, Fabiano was the person to pull that together. So I thank him for his help. So before I get started, I wanted to just maybe give a little overview of the 2020 uh, growing season. Um, looking at the state average yield here, uh, according to the USDA NASS, uh, was 54 bushels per acre, uh, which is not our highest state average yield, but it's among the highest. Um, last year, and I guess two years now, uh, in 2019, uh, the average yield in the state was 49 bushels per acre, but um, 2019 was, was a pretty rough year for many uh, trying to plant their fields. Uh, looking at planting dates, uh, I looked at 50% uh, of soybean fields planted by these dates. Uh, last year, 50% of the soybean, soybean fields were planted uh, around uh, May 24th. Uh, the year before that, 2019 was June 23rd. So you can see uh, the effect there of that late, late planting. And this is the average yield for those fields that got planted. Uh, in 2019, there are a lot of soybean acres that uh, weren't planted at all because of the wet conditions. But uh, this May 24th planting date uh, is pretty representative of a average soybean planting date in Ohio. Uh, looking at the weather, uh, this is the US drought monitor uh, from May 26th. Um, no no uh, issues there early on. A month later, June 23rd, uh, you can see Northwest Ohio up here becoming dry. Uh, one month later, July 21st, um, the state continues to, to get dry, uh, most severely up in that Northwest uh, portion of the state. Uh, August 25th, uh, some of that those drought conditions go away in the western portion of the state. And then in September, uh, still some dry areas in northwest Ohio, but um, less, less uh, stress symptoms there. So we know that planting date matters. Um, I've said it quite a few times, and I know a lot of other uh, industry and extension people talk about the importance of soybean planting date. And it really is the number one management factor that influences soybean yield across the US. Uh, we've worked, uh, soybean agronomists across the US have worked uh, quite a few years to identify the yield gap in soybean. So basically, when you plant a soybean variety, uh, there is a yield potential, and that yield potential is limited by your environment. So temperature, uh, rainfall, other characteristics. Uh, but farmers don't achieve that top yield potential for some reason. Um, that could be fertility, weeds, insects, diseases, poor management. So the difference between that yield potential and that actual farm yield is what we term uh, yield gap. And looking at our, our data over the past really about six years now, uh, the number one factor that influences that yield gap is planting date. Uh, this is just a summary of where that data came from. Uh, so some of you may have filled out a paper survey for me uh, a few years ago uh, asking about your soybean yield, uh, management practices, uh, all kinds of things. 
And so uh, we took that paper survey data. Uh, we had each field GPS referenced um, and put them into these growing environments shown by the colors in this map. So Ohio is primarily this region one purple color. Uh, this is the northern portion of Ohio, which would be similar to growing environment uh, to Western Michigan. And then also uh, region two, which is this bluish area, um, central going into West Central Ohio. So looking at this survey data, we were able to, to plot uh, planting date by soybean yield. So this panel A, this is region one, and I'll go back real quick. Region one, as a reminder, is this purple area, and really purple area anywhere on this map. Um, region one, uh, soybeans were planted as early as about April 25th, uh, and then on the slope of this line is a half a bushel. So there was a half bushel per acre per day reduction in soybean yield in region one for each day soybeans were planted after about April 25th. Uh, the second region here, region two, region two is this blue area of Ohio. Uh, here, the yield reduction wasn't quite as great. Uh, it was about 0.15, so 0.15 bushel per acre per day loss in soybean yield for each day planted after uh, the end of April. Uh, this region here uh, is, is North Dakota. Uh, and you can see that there is no yield penalty really for planting at any time in North Dakota. Um, so why, why would that occur? Uh, so the, the researchers here looked at uh, water balance during, during pod set. Uh, so again, region one here is where there is a half bushel per acre per day reduction in soybean yield for each day planted after the end of April. Uh, this region had enough water. And so with adequate water, the yield potential was, was high. It was a half bushel per acre to, per, per day. Uh, region two, I had some yield loss associated with planting date, uh, but not quite as much. This area though had less water available to the plant. And then region two um, or three here, again, North Dakota, where there was no effective planting date at all in the years of this study was really dry. So planting date is extremely important, um, but also in, you have to think of it in the context of uh, rainfall it's really critical to have that rainfall at the R3 to R5 growth stage. So I'm gonna talk about um, some of our small plot planting date data. So what I showed earlier was based on paper surveys uh, that farmers gave us. Uh, so we did some of this research in small plots as well, just to see um, what the effect would be there. Uh, this was in 2020. Uh, we had hoped to do the trial actually in 2019. Uh, but 2019 was a very bad year to try to do a planting date study. Uh, so we had the trial in Wood County in Northwest Ohio and then Clark County, uh, which is uh, Western Ohio, just west of Columbus. Uh, we were very fortunate to have good planting dates um, in Wood County as early as April 27th and then as late as June 22nd in both counties. Uh, we had five seeding rates, uh, as low as 50,000 seeds per acre, and then as high as 250,000 seeds per acre. So first, I'm going to talk about the Clark County results. Uh, this is for our May 7th planting date. This is the first planting date that we had in Clark County. Uh, here on the vertical axis, you're looking at soybean yield in bushels per acre uh, versus our, our seeding rates here, again, as low as 50,000 and as high as 250,000 seeds per acre. Uh, each dot here represents the average of four replications. So we had uh, four, four plots, basically. So this is just the average to make it easier to look at. Uh, then uh, Fabiano, and I, I stole his analysis, uh, Fabiano analyzed the data uh, to, to fit a model. So that's what this black line shows. And this is a linear plateau model. And basically what we see here is when we planted on May 7th, uh, the maximum yield was 81 bushels per acre. And we were able to achieve that yield at a seeding rate of, of 115,000 seeds per acre. 
going to our next planting date, which was May 25th. And again, this was about that average planting date in Ohio last year. Again, the same thing, uh, Fabiano uh, did some analysis where he fit a line to the data. Uh, the maximum yield here was 79 bushels per acre, and that was 116,000 seeds per acre. So really not much difference between that May 7th planting date and our um, May 25th planting date here in terms of yield and optimum seeding rate. Uh, the next one was June 12th for our planting date. That's the gray circles here. Again, a very similar yield potential. We had our maximum yield at 80 bushels per acre. Uh, what's different though, is that we achieved this maximum yield of 80 bushels per acre at a seeding rate of 174,000 seeds per acre. So even though our, our high yield was the same, regardless of planting date, it took more seed to achieve that, that maximum yield. And then our last planting date uh, was June uh, 22nd. Uh, this could be representative maybe of a double crop soybeans. Um, here, whoops, here, uh, there was an increase in yield as we increased our seeding rate. And really our optimum seeding rate was 250,000 seeds per acre. We didn't test anything greater than that, uh, but that yield was increasing with, with seeding rate. So we would say our optimum there was at least 250,000 seeds per acre. So I think this, this location is really interesting because that maximum yield really was the same for all three of those first planting dates, May 7th, May 22nd, and June 12th. Uh, but what was different there was when we planted in June, we needed that higher seeding rate. And that was really 34% more seed required in June to get the exact same yield. So um, I, I think that's, that's pretty interesting. And then also, and we can, as we continue to plant later uh, to June 22nd, um, our maximum yield decreased quite a bit uh, down to 65 bushels per acre. And our, our seeding rate needed to be 250,000 seeds per acre. So um, the other story here is as you plant soybeans later, you need to seed at a higher rate. Uh, in the Ohio Agronomy Guide, uh, we like to see 100,000 to 250,000 plants per acre at harvest. And so uh, for May planting dates, like we had at Western last year, very high yielding conditions, uh, we only really needed 115,000 seeds per acre. Um, and maybe lower yielding conditions or fields with disease or other issues, you may have to seed higher. Uh, in June, uh, looking at our, our recommendations in our Ohio Agronomy Guide, uh, we usually need a final stand of 130 to 150,000 plants per acre at harvest uh, to maximize yield. So I'm going to turn uh, my attention now to uh, Wood County. Uh, so Wood County is Northwest Ohio. Uh, we had four planting dates, uh, May 7th, May 22nd, June 12th. And, oh, that's the wrong one, Wood County, April 27th, May 27th, June 8th, and June 22nd. Again, those five uh, seeding rates. So uh, before I go on, I wanted to, to ask you guys, um, this is maybe a little bit hard over a webinar, uh, which, which planting date had the highest yield? So based on what I just told you, which, which planting date was the highest yield? And I don't know if you guys can maybe uh, type that in the chat box. And you can just put one, two, three, and four for the four planting dates. Or I have I have a guess of May 27th. And if you see a name that says Fabiano that pops up, that's my graduate student. So he's probably cheating, giving you the answer. So it looks like here, uh, most people are saying either that April, the May, there was one, one person who voted for June 8th but most people are voting that April 27th. Oh, someone, Will Hammond, he's my former grad student, he should know better, uh, voted uh, June 22nd. So looks like you guys are still typing them in. So mostly, mostly one and twos, a few people who think I'm gonna trick you and say something later. So the highest yielding Planting date in Northwest Ohio and our, our trials in Wood County uh, was June 8th. 
Um, on June 8th, our, our yield, average yield was 53 bushels per acre. And we got that with a very low seeding rate. So really we only needed 97,000 seeds per acre uh, to get that maximum yield. So not, not at all the same story as what we saw at that Western Ohio location. Uh, after June 8th, uh, the next highest yield was 49 bushels per acre uh, on June 22nd, so that really late planting date. Um, our optimum seeding rate there was 161,000 seeds per acre. Next was that April 27th planting date, uh, 46 bushels per acre, optimum seeding rate of 126,000. And then that May 27th uh, planting date, uh, that a lot of people thought would be the best um, was only 43 bushels per acre. So uh, there was a 10 bushel per acre difference uh, between planting May 27th and uh, June 8th. So not what we would expect, but um, the, these things can definitely happen when we do these trials. And I really think uh, a lot of this was probably due to the weather. Uh, my student Bob Yano pulled this weather weather information as well, and what you'll notice um, here in August, end of July into August, uh, there was not much rainfall. So soybeans are really sensitive. And this should say R three, not R two. That's a typo. Uh, but soybeans are really sensitive to water stress at the R three to R five uh, growth stage. So when those pods are coming on and seeds are beginning to fill. And what, we'll, what we saw here uh, with that June 8th planting date, uh, the soybeans hit that R3 to R5 later uh, where they captured more of that later season rainfall. So um, this is the rainfall during that R3 to R5 growth stage. So on June 8th, um, during that stage, the soybean plants got about four inches of rain. Um, for the later planting into June, uh, the, the plants captured about 3.2 inches of rain. And then for the early planting dates, uh, the, the plants hit that R3 to R5 growth stage uh, when it was pretty dry, about two to two and a half inches of water or rainfall during that time period. So uh, I think that's interesting to look at um, these plants and how they develop in conjunction to when the rainfall comes. Uh, so that was just one site year of data up in Wood County. Uh, we're going to repeat it again in this year, hopefully if the weather cooperates. Um, so we'll have a second year of data. Uh, you shouldn't draw super huge conclusions, you know, on one location, one year of data. Um, but we did do a planting date study up there in 2014 as well. Uh, this is NWARS is Wood County. Um, we had three planting dates because it was hard to get any more in. Uh, that year there was a flat line. So whether we planted um, in early May or into June, there was no yield difference. Uh, the other two locations here, Wars, that's uh, Clark County, there was a reduction in, in soybean yield, uh, 0.6 bushels per acre per day for each day uh, planted after early May, mid-May. So um, that Western Ohio, we see more of an effect, I think, of, of planting date. Uh, where Wood County, we have two years, this 2020 year, and then this year, this year shown here in 2014, where there was really no no effective planting date. So it'll be really interesting to repeat this study in 2021 and see if we can get a yield response to planting date in Northwest Ohio. So, you know, in conclusion, uh, yes, yes, planting date matters uh, a lot, uh, but it is weather dependent. Um, so you need rainfall during that R3 to R5 growth stage, which is roughly in, in August for normal planting dates. I also want to talk about some of our on-farm research. Uh, we've done this, this trial for um, two years, and maybe some of you on the call um, have participated in this research. Uh, we call this trial uh, Boots on the Ground. It's a uh, multi-state project uh, led by researchers in Wisconsin and Nebraska, but Ohio is a, is a collaborating state. Uh, so again, we know the number one factor uh, that influences soybean yield is planting date. Um, but other important factors that we found as a part of our paper survey I mentioned earlier uh, were, were tillage, uh, foliar fungicide and or insecticide. And those we can't really separate out because the farmers uh, tend to tank mix those products. So we can't see the effect of them separately based on this data set. And then artificial drainage. 
So we did uh, on-farm research the past two years, uh, focusing just on planting date and then foliar fungicide and insecticide, um, because we can't really ask farmers to do a trial on farm with artificial drainage or tillage. So we did the two factors that were uh, most easy for farmers to manage. So this trial had two treatments. Uh, we called them the improved system and the standard system. Uh, the improved system was uh, planting soybeans the end of April or early May at a seeding rate of 130,000 seeds per acre. And then uh, we sprayed a foliar fungicide and insecticide tank mixed at the R3 growth stage. Uh, this system was compared to the standard system. So the standard system was to plant about three weeks later than that first system at a higher seeding rate, 160,000 uh, seeds per acre. And then we did not apply any um, foliar products at all. So in 2019, uh, we had a really nice uh, west to east distribution across the state. I had more farmers lined up in Western Ohio in 2019, but many of them couldn't plant uh, timely because of how wet it was. Uh, but um, we were able to get quite a few trials in 2019 despite, despite the weather conditions. Uh, 2020, this past year, uh, we were able to pull in more trials from Western Ohio um, and even up getting a little bit into Northwestern Ohio. Uh, I lost all of the trials in Eastern Ohio uh, because that was the wet portion of the state in 2020. So uh, they were clustered more in the Western part of the state in 2020. So these are the results. Um, and this is showing data from all of the states. So this is a, a whole uh, North Central Soybean Research Program project. Um, this first box shows uh, the 2019 year on 2019, we had uh, 48 trials total across the Midwest. Um, what you're looking at here is the yield of the reference on the bottom. So this would be, again, the reference or standard treatment, which would be the later planting, higher seeding rate, and then no tank mix of any products compared to the yield of the improved system. And again, approved was earlier planting, uh, a lower seeding rate, and the tank mix of foliar fungicide and insecticide at R3. Um, I tried to circle the Ohio trials here because they kind of overlap. Uh, but basically, any, any trial above this red line means there was a yield advantage to the improved system. So yield increased in that improved system compared to the standard treatment. And that average yield increase was five and a half bushels per acre. And that's across the Midwest. Uh, when I looked at the Ohio data separately, uh, we were right in line about five bushel yield advantage um, to, to that improved treatment. You'll notice uh, there's one location out here uh, that had about a 20 bushel yield advantage in the improved versus the standard treatment. Uh, this location had frog eye leaf spot. Uh, so there was probably a planting date effect there plus an effect of that foliar fungicide treatment at R3. Uh, then we'll move on to 2020, which is over here. Uh, we had a few more trials in 2020 across the Midwest. Uh, the weather was a lot better. Uh, but what you'll notice here, uh, the yield benefit was not as great. Um, there was a small yield advantage to that improved system, but it was about three bushels uh, per acre. So uh, the reason we think uh, there was more yield advantage in 2019 is our planting dates. Um, in 2019, our good planting dates tended to still be the very end of May into June because of how wet the weather was. So if your good planting date is end of May and then your three week later treatment is into June, you can see where there would be some uh, yield differences there. Uh, in 2020, uh, the planting con conditions were a lot better. Uh, so our early planting dates that year tended to be in early May, and then our controlled treatment or standard treatment was uh, the end of end of May. Uh, the other reason, at least in Ohio, where um, this yield advantage was probably less could be due to the weather. Again, I showed in Ohio, there was quite a bit of dry weather um, in July and August. And so when we're thinking about um, the effect of a fungicide, uh, you have to have a disease. And with drier weather, um, disease can be less of a factor. So um, yield advantage there, but not as much in 2020. 
uh, looking at uh, the return, uh, this is the additional profit um, due to the improved system versus that standard system. And that break even is um, denoted by this red dotted line. This is 2019 and 2020 on the other side. Uh, 2019, again, a much more greater yield effect. Um, and on average, there was an additional $51 per acre uh, in profitability associated with that improved treatment. Um, in 2020, there was less of an effect on yield, uh, so profitability was not as great. Um, that was about $31 per acre, um, but still the majority of, of the trials did have um, a net gain in profitability. So in summary, um, in 2019, there was a bigger yield effect with this project. 2020, it was about 33 bushels per acre. Uh, in terms of profitability, uh, $51 per acre in the first year and $31 per acre in the second year. So if anyone is interested in uh, participating in the trial in 2021, uh, we are going to do it again. Uh, this project, uh, we worked very closely with county extension educators. So if you're interested, uh, you can feel free to contact me or uh, Mary or Amanda or any county extension educator should be able to help you. Uh, we are focusing on the blue areas of the state. Um, this is that specific growing region in Ohio, that region two that I showed earlier. Uh, region one up here um, is actually the responsibility of Michigan uh, because they were that purple color as well. So I'm just focusing on region two here in Ohio. Um, if you want more information on the trial itself, you can find it on my website. Uh, the trial protocol is there. I also have the first year report. I need to add the second year and I'll be doing that soon as well. Um, and again, this research uh, really uh, wouldn't have come together without the graduate students. So Fabiano Colette here uh, with the planting date research and then Greg McGlinch helped a lot uh, with this boots on the ground trial. So um, thanks to them, the farmers, extension educators, and then funding from the North Central uh, Soybean Research Program and the Ohio Soybean Council. So I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions anyone may have. Yeah, we have a few that have come in. The first one, what was the soybean maturity? Uh, on that planting date study, I don't remember exactly. Um, usually for those types of trials, we usually try to go with the 3.3 three to 3.4, three, 3.5. Three, so it was in, in that range. Okay. And have you done any research on a half rate of fungicide on V3 soybeans? I have not, but I think with Ann Doran's coming, I think she's the third talk in the afternoon. That would be a good one to say for Ann. Hey, has Ohio done any recent SWM work? Can you help me with SWM? <laughs> I'm spacing out on that one. Not sure what that is either. Russell, if you can specify. Oh, soybean white mold. Great, thanks Grace. Oh. You guys have my back. Oh, and Alan, Alan, my technician, the soybean relative maturity was 3.3. So I always tell like my staff and graduate students to get on these calls and you can see now why, because I, I can't answer the questions as well as they can. So uh, soybean white mold, uh, I haven't done any work on soybean white mold. So that would be another good one for Ann uh, later today. Yeah. Um, does the profitability of the improved system include the cost of the fungicide and the reduced cost of seed? Yeah, yeah. So those profitability calculations uh, took into account, I think, even the application cost to spray, the product cost, and then the seed cost differences based on the seeding rate. So yes. Great. And in 2020, did you get much rain after fungicide application? Um, so these were on farm. My guess is probably not a whole lot since it was pretty dry in the state uh, most of August, but exactly how much rainfall after application, I don't have that answer very easily. Okay. What was the row spacing? Uh, for our small plot planting date research, that was 15 inches. Uh, for that boots on the ground on-farm trials, 
the majority uh, were 15 inches, but I think there was one that was uh, 30 inches. Okay. And lastly, were the beans treated with fungicide and inoculation? So for our small plot research, uh, the seed uh, was treated uh, with the standard insecticide, fungicide, seed treatments, uh, no inoculation, but these were uh, fields that were in corn soybean rotation, so it probably wasn't needed. Uh, for the on-farm trials, you know, farmers picked their own soybean varieties and planted whatever was standard for their farm. Um, most of them had some sort of insecticide and fungicide package. Um, some probably inoculated as well, but the majority for sure had that fungicide and insecticide for the on-farm trial. Okay, and I just saw there are a couple questions in the chat. Um, this one I thought maybe you addressed, but plant date versus seed yield. What are the profits, not just yield? Yeah, so for our uh, the planting date study uh, with the small plots, I didn't uh, talk about profitability at all, but that, I mean, that's an excellent point. Uh, when you start planting later, your yields go down, but you need higher seed. So uh, I didn't show that calculation. That's something that we're working on. Um, it's still the first year of that data. And so uh, poor Fabiano is very busy looking at the yield calculations, but we're gonna move on to profitability next. So instead of seeing yield on that vertical axis, we'll have profitability uh, and we'll, we'll look at that. And then do you look at soil biology after spraying a fungicide? No, we don't. Um, with these trials, we're looking mostly at yield. Okay, thanks, Laura. And since we have some extra time, if anyone has any question about any other random soybean topic, we can talk about software, foliar fertilizer, anything. Maybe I'm opening up a can of worms, but if there's extra time and there's any other questions about things like that, feel free to, to type them in the chat box. Yeah, we've got about five minutes. Um, just a reminder that you all will receive an email about a survey. So those are really helpful for us, not only for grant reporting, for some of the funding that we've received to do these integrated pest management programs, but also to see what your interests are and further guide research into the future. So look for that in your email um, in a couple days. Okay, there's more questions. <laughs> I'll do the one about nitrogen first, uh, cause that one's uh, an easy answer. So uh, we've looked at a lot of nitrogen applications to soybean. We've looked at pre-plant, we've looked at it later at the reproductive stages, different rates, starter nitrogen, all kinds of things. Um, and we haven't seen much response that would be profitable. Once in a while, there'll be a yield increase, uh, but not, not something that would be economically uh, feasible. Uh, recently, soybean agronomists across the U.S. came together and pooled all of their uh, nitrogen soybean work together. And across the U.S., regardless of rate, um, there was only about a one bushel yield increase when nitrogen was applied. So uh, it's not a, a practice that, that we recommend and we have data to you know, back applying uh, nitrogen to soybean. So what else? Um, keep popping up. Yeah, also uh, stressing beans at V3 to increase branching. So we, and by we, um, there was interest in an, with an educator in Northeastern Ohio to do this. And every time he tried to do it, the weather got really wet and he wasn't able to do the on-farm trial. Uh, Michigan State, uh, they have some research where they've rolled soybeans very early on vegetatively to stress them out. Um, and once in a while, I think they've seen a yield benefit in Michigan, uh, but it's not an every year type of thing. I know there can be some advantages in areas that are rocky because it can help push rocks down and make harvest easier. Uh, but we haven't we haven't done that that work here in Ohio. So um, in Michigan, I think it's kind of a, a hit or miss type of thing. Okay, oh, this one just got promoted. What do you think about the supposed yield difference between extend and enlist beans? So that's something that I'm working on right now. So I'll put a plug in for our next um, meeting on Thursday. Um, I don't know when it is. There's a, a non-GMO meeting coming up in March at nine o'clock. And I'm going to actually analyze that from our performance trials, comparing the yield in our trials of non-GMO 
uh, those conventional beans compared to extend, compared to enlist, compared to uh, enlist. So we have all those technologies in our performance trials. So I need to dig into that data and I'm actually gonna analyze across our locations. So um, that answer is coming soon. So come, come to that non-GMO soybean meeting in March. All right, great. Um, have you done any research on the P&K removal per bushel of high yielding soybeans, in particular above 75 bushels? Yeah, so uh, for that one, um, I've done some work with Steve Coleman with his phosphorus and potassium trials. Uh, we put out uh, these, these trials at our, our performance trial locations and we get, we get high yields in those southern portion of the state. Um, I give him all of my grain samples and he analyzes that. Um, so all of my data has gone into his data set. And I think uh, Steve has shown um, over time that removal is, I think there's less, I might say it wrong. I probably won't say anything. It's in Steve's data set. He is a fact sheet on it. So all of my data goes, goes to Steve in that area. All right. Have you seen, uh, well, you answered the nitrogen one already, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, since you brought it up, thoughts on starter fertilizer sulfur for beans? So we, we did some sulfur work in 2013, 2014 um, at planting as gypsum. Uh, and this past year in 2020, we also had a sulfur trial at six locations in Ohio. Uh, the first set of years was 2013, 2014. Uh, I think we had close to 15 different growing environments and we never saw a yield benefit to sulfur at planting. Uh, I haven't fully analyzed our 2020 data yet, uh, but just roughly looking at the average yields, um, there doesn't seem to be a, a huge yield effect of sulfur. Um, I know at the E-Fields meeting, I think it was on Tuesday uh, in Knox County, they did see a yield benefit to adding sulfur, uh, but it was a one-year thing, not necessarily something they see um, each year. So um, sulfur is something we are, we are keeping an eye on. Um, if you are farming in sandy soils or uh, low organic matter soils, you're more likely to see deficiencies first um, compared to, to areas with adequate um, soil organic matter. So um, right now there's not a huge response, but it's definitely something we're keeping an eye on. Okay. Um, let's see, I see Mark just joined us. Um, sulfur wrecks on soybeans. Um, you kind of discovered that. I guess, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at your conditions. If you have those low organic matter, sandy soils, uh, soil testing for sulfur isn't a great strategy. Um, it's hard to measure in the soil. Uh, so if you think you're seeing sulfur problems, you can look for visual symptoms of deficiency or maybe take a tissue sample. Uh, that would be a really uh, one diagnostic way to see if, if you're maybe low in phosphorus and need to, to um, apply something. Okay, um, there's one more in there. If I don't know if that's a quick one, updates regarding research on soybean self-thinning or you can type an answer since we're at 140 and we've got Mark on now. Yeah, I can type that in so we can get Mark going. So I'll, I'll type your answer, Brad. Thanks, Laura. Yep. 